Good evening. It has been three and a half months since we began our fight to defeat the coronavirus pandemic in the country. It has so far been a coordinated and enhanced response with tracing, testing, isolating, treating, and the maintenance of the relevant social distancing and hygiene protocols being the weapons we continue to employ to help contain the spread of the virus. We are all agreed that this novel disease has thrust the whole world into unknown and uncharted territory, and we're having to learn as we go along. As part of the phased approach to return our lives safely back to normal, final year students in our tertiary institutions return to school on Monday, 15th June, to prepare for and sit their exit exams. One week on, it has proved to be a relatively smooth exercise with very few hitches recorded. I thank in particular the Vice Chancellors and other heads of our tertiary institutions for the support and cooperation offered government towards its success. Indeed, decisions like those being taken by the leadership of Sunyani Technical University in the Bono region to sanction students, lecturers, and non-teaching staff who flout the COVID-19 protocols, reinforce the collective determination of the majority of Ghanaians to defeat the virus. From tomorrow, Monday the 22nd of June, the next batch of students who will be going back to school, our final year senior high school students, SHS3, and second year Go Track students. On Thursday, I held consultations with members of both the Conference of Heads of Assisted Secondary Schools, CHAS, and the Association of Principals of Technical Institutes, AAPTI, to agree on the modalities for the return of the students. Despite the short notice for the meeting, I was happy to see the impressive turnout of their executives from all parts of the country and I'm grateful for the wholehearted cooperation they pledged to government. Like their seniors at the university, SHS3 students will be in school for a total of six weeks before sitting for the WASI exams over a period of two weeks. SHS2 Gold Track students who are returning to complete their first semester like the Green Tracks colleagues have done, will be in school for six weeks before going on vacation. All 1,167 senior high schools in the country have been fumigated and disinfected. Each student, teaching and non-teaching staff, invigilator and school administrator numbering some 800,000, will be provided with three pieces of reusable face masks, i.e. two, being provided tomorrow and the third within a fortnight. Nonetheless, I encourage parents to provide their wards and children with at least one face covering on their way to school. A total of 18,000 Veronica buckets, 800,000 pieces of 200 mils sanitizers, 36,000 rolls of tissue paper, 36,000 gallons of liquid soap, and 7,200 thermometer guns have been distributed. A maximum of 25 students will be permitted in each class. All day students in schools with boarding houses will be resident in these boarding houses. Whilst day students 
in schools without boarding facilities will commute from home and will be required to adhere to enhanced hygiene protocols. Eating in dining halls will be in appropriate numbers and no visitors to the schools will be allowed. There will be no mass gatherings and no sporting activities. Religious activities under the new protocols will be permitted. Social distancing and the wearing of face masks are obligatory in our schools. One dormitory block in each senior high school is to be used as an isolation center in the event of a student falling sick. Again, each senior high school has been mapped to a health facility and care will be provided to the sick by nurses assigned to these schools. Through the National Food and Buffer Stock Company, enough food supplies have been distributed to all schools. Government is also making available 350 buses and 840 pickup vehicles to senior high schools that did not receive vehicles in 2016. For the first time in our nation's history, the government will absorb the West Sea examination fees of the 313,837 students who will sit for the exam. 75.4 million CDs will be spent on this. These SHS3 students, also referred to by some, as the Akufuado graduates, are also the first group of beneficiaries of government's free senior high school policy to sit the WASI exams. 1.2 million children, the highest such enrollment in our nation's history because of this policy, are currently in senior high schools. Let us pause for a moment to consider what would have happened to the 400,000 more students who have entered senior high school between 2017 and 2019 without this policy in place. We introduced free SHS because history and the experiences of developed nations have shown that the most efficient way to empower the population and thereby guarantee the future of the nation is by investing in education and skills training of the youth. This is because it is the people of Ghana, Ghanaians like you and I, and especially the youth of today, who are going to build Ghana. Without an educated populace, it will be difficult to transition from the status of a developing to a developed nation. Summing it up, that most noble Ghanaian, James Quijia Agri, said a hundred years ago, and I quote, I want all my people, my countrymen and women, to be educated and thus render Africa indispensable in intellectual, spiritual, and commercial products of the world, unquote. I take this opportunity to assure all parents and guardians the government is determined to protect the lives of the 800,000 students, teachers, and non-teaching staff who will be returning to school from tomorrow. I will be the last person to put the lives of the Akufuado graduates at risk. It bears repeating that they must all adhere strictly to enhance personal hygiene and social distancing protocols. Regularly wash their hands with soap, under running water, refrain from shaking hands, and wear masks to protect themselves and others. These rules apply to all of us. Fellow Ghanaians, the experts told us right at the beginning of this pandemic that whether the virus spreads or not is dependent on our individual behavior. Someone put it graphically, 
that the virus has not got feet and cannot move by itself and that we humans spread it. The large majority of us continue to adhere to the protocols. Unfortunately, there are some who do not. Others have slackened, and an unacceptably significant number have refused to bathe them altogether. In such an atmosphere, if we do not take care, the virus will continue to spread, which will lead to intolerable pressure on our health facilities and caregivers. Each one of us must be part of the fight to stop the spread of the virus. Our approach to dealing with the virus, as I've always said, will be informed by the evolving science and data. At the outset of the pandemic, the scientific community and the World Health Organization, WHO, on 12 January 2020, recommended two main criteria for declaring someone who was tested positive as having recovered from the disease. The first is that you no longer have symptoms. And the second is that you're no longer capable of infecting others. Initially, the scientific thinking was that as long as you continue to test positive, you're capable of infecting others. Hence the requirement for the two consecutive negative tests before you're declared as having recovered. This was the science that informed the guidelines that Ghana has so far followed. However, there's now new evidence which states that after 10 to 14 days, a person with no symptoms is unlikely to transmit the virus to others, even if the person continues to test positive. It is on this basis that WHO has updated its guidelines as published per its clinical management of COVID-19 interim guidance of 27th May 2020, quote, as part of the clinical care pathway of a COVID-19 patient, unquote. According to WHO, asymptomatic patients, i.e. those who have tested positive for the virus but are not exhibiting any symptoms after 14 days, quote, are not likely to be infectious and therefore are unlikely to be able to transmit the virus to another person, unquote. After three weeks of analyzing and studying this update and recommendation and situating it in the Ghanaian context, in line with the admonition by WHO to member states, this new patient discharge recovery policy has now been adopted by Ghana, as have some countries in the European Union, Singapore, India, Malaysia, Hong Kong, and Dubai. As of Saturday, 20th June, the total number of positives cumulatively stands at 14,154 out of the 270,300 tests conducted. Under the revised policy, 5,925 persons have recovered and been discharged. This brings the total number of recoveries to 10,473. The number of active cases is thus 3,596. In our hospitals and isolation centers, we currently have 24 persons severely ill, six persons critically ill, with four persons on ventilators, 85 persons have regrettably died. This increased number of persons being discharged from our isolation and treatment centers brings in its weight yet another issue that we have to deal with, stigmatization. It is obvious the stigmatization is adding further dimensions to the already difficult problem of the pandemic. 
Part of the reason for the spread of the virus is the reluctance of some persons to admit they have tested positive and go into quarantine for fear of being stigmatized and in the process continue to be agents of the spread of the virus. Persons who test positive for the virus once they recover do not pose any danger whatsoever to anyone because the scientists tell us that they can no longer spread the virus. As I have said before, there is nothing shameful about contracting the virus. And consequently, we do not have to lose our sense of community because of this pandemic. Fellow Ghanaians, in line with our policy of providing optimal care for the sick, and reducing COVID-19 related deaths. Government continues to mobilize holding bay, quarantine, isolation and treatment centers across the country. I thank the Ghana National Association of Teachers, GNAT, for their admirable civic gesture of making available their facility in Ejusso in the Ashanti region. And the Catholic Bishops Conference for agreeing to the use of their facilities across the country as isolation centers in the fight against COVID-19. These are timely offers which will ensure that our overall health care systems are not unduly burdened and overrun. Such institutions deserve the sincere appreciation of the entire nation, as does the gesture of the Minister for Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Professor Kwabna Frimpong Bwate, who was offered a 70-bed hospital in Twasi in the Ashanti region as a COVID-19 treatment center. As I indicated in my address to the nation last week, the great majority of cases are in the Great Accra and Ashanti regions. For these two regions, I've approved further investment in the following areas. Additional ICU bed facilities in Greater Accra Region. A new treatment center for Ashanti Region. Additional laboratories to strengthen clinical care to allow for real-time results. More medicines, consumables, and equipment, and formal arrangements for a pool of specialist health professionals to complement the respective resident multidisciplinary health teams at various treatment centers. We continue to be indebted to our health workers and express sorrow over the death of Dr. Harry Owusu a pediatrician at the SDA hospital in Kwada Sukumasi, and Sophia Addo a nurse with the Ghana Manganese Company Hospital in Takwa, who both died in the line of duty. May their souls rest in perfect peace. I also urge the media to continue the positive work of public education they have been engaged in, especially now as restrictions are being systematically eased. Before I conclude, let me remind all Ghanaians, once again, that the wearing of masks is mandatory. Leaving our homes without a face mask, a face covering, or a face shield on is an offense. The police will conduct random checks in the enforcement of this directive. If you are arrested by the police, you define this directive, your sanctions could be severe. So please, let us all, at all times, wear our masks. I appeal to each and every one of you to take this as a personal challenge and help rid Ghana of the virus. Even though we now have a better understanding of the dynamism of the virus in our country, even though the majority of people who contract the virus do not show any symptoms at all. 
And even though Ghanaians are not dying in the hundreds and thousands that were originally anticipated, we cannot afford to be complacent and let our guard down. Let us remain focused and adhere to the enhanced hygiene, social distancing, and mask-wearing protocols that have, have and must become part and parcel of our daily lives for the foreseeable future. We can do it if we work at it. And you know, if you're a SHS 34, but I go to school, but I'm not going I could see her there. Now, only to me, I'm strong on social, a chat to SHS2 go track for us. But I could read one term, a decline. Send a green track for a year. Then she said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they say, And now, when you go to school, I will for intimate concern on my own dead body. You say, Bad thing, I'm my own for. Then so, a year, my young man. Now, me shall for bo. Say, I buy school for one penny for any teacher for. We are sure school for no. So, I bought a whole buy senior a fatter. The only way in Sahara now, only a sunny abbefie as some dream. But in by bought a Taiwanian a cheap. The only chap in Sahara no. Fair, fair, fair. And you mean me? Because the war, where SHS3B is by a school, because it's not in you. Because I'm here, 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 I mean, yeah, I may ask, I may be here. No, genuine, fair. She nakai, ba he, can have a school be here. Me won't, yes, she ake, in government. I'm not sure, like, or look by, get all a fair, ba quen ye be your joba. Quen ye come, make bam examine now, and ba could say, I make kebasia, or joba. Me sorry, I had me, me am a ye in kunin. Let me, in conclusion, wish the Akufuado graduates, the SHS3 students, and their seniors in university the best of luck in their forthcoming examinations, which will be conducted in safety. Ghana needs them all for her progress. May God bless us all and our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention.